going on guys? In today's video we're going to be going over the top 5 best tips to improve with log bait. So the first tip is going to be to always play your first goblin barrel right in the center of your opponent's tower. I see way too many people going with their first barrel in the anti-nado spot, otherwise known as the safe spot, which is kind of counterproductive because it doesn't even prevent the king tower from being activated by a well-timed tornado. And also it makes it way easier for your opponent to counter with really any splash card like a fire spirit, valkyrie, dark prince, really anything like that. So that's going to be the first tip. In the first match it looks like we'll be up against a golem deck, a pretty hard matchup since we have no inferno tower. I'm using this bomb tower version of log bait that I saw Riley running, but I think in the last two games of today's video I'll be using the inferno tower version for some of you guys who prefer to run classic bait. I'm going to go with my rocket here on his baby dragon and golem, making sure not to miss my rocket like a lot of log bait players love to do. These e-barbs could be a bit hard to defend, I'll bring them towards the middle with my skeletons. Uh, hopefully the bomb tower can take out these e-barbs. Okay wait, there is one e-barb left alive. Oh, luckily the tower does kill it, I was kind of scared there for a few seconds. By the way guys, I'll kind of spread out these 5 tips throughout the different games in today's video. The second tip will be to always switch up your defenses. I see way too many log bait players doing the same defenses every single time, but like say your opponent has a battle ring and you have a classic log bait deck with Inferno Tower and Goblin Gang, you kind of want to like always switch up how you defend it. Maybe like half of the time you go with the Goblin Gang onto the battle ring and half of the time you'd go with the Inferno Tower. Because if you play log bait too predictably, it's really easy for your opponent to just get that nice prediction log on your Goblin Gang and get like a ton of damage on your tower. So you always want to kind of switch up your cards, switch up your placements as well, like if they go with like a graveyard, sometimes they try to prediction poison your dark goblin, so you kind of want to just like switch up your stuff each time, and it should give you a lot of a lot of better outplayability with log bait. And yeah, so I'm just going to talk about this match now. We're looking pretty good here, I'm going to go for my barrel. It could be a bit hard to defend his golem. I don't know if he has any lightning in his deck though, so it might be hard for him to break through this building. He will nade our Dark Goblin. Uh, does get some good value still. Baby Dragon does kill it. I'm going to go for my Rocket here. We don't miss our Rocket. <laughs> See, if I was Riley, I think I would have missed like three Rockets by now. Like two or three Rockets. So, uh, yeah, just glad I'm not him. We're looking pretty good here. I think the Dark Goblin should take out these E-Barbs. He has no, no like, uh, Bar Barrel in his deck. Only a Zap, so it's kind of hard for him to take out these Barrels. I'm going to go for my Barrel here. Dark Goblin will lock onto his tower, and I think that should be a good game. So I'll see you guys in the next match. The third tip is to play your goblin barrel strategically. I see a lot of log bait players just spamming their barrel as if they're playing a 2.6 hog cycle deck, but for a log bait deck you kind of have to have a bit more thought process behind why you would go in with your goblin barrel because if you just spam it your opponent can easily counter it for usually a positive elixir trade like a snowball or a log or something so you kind of want to go with it for a good reason like say you're facing a graveyard deck and they have arrows as well then you might want to go in with the barrel right before they graveyard so they have no arrows to support their graveyard push and kill your dark goblin for example now it looks like here we're going to be up against a giant graveyard deck so in this matchup this guy does have snowball arrows and i think scar me as well so it could be very hard to get damage so I feel like an example in this matchup of playing it strategically with your barrels is to go in with the barrel right as they go with a giant graveyard push. Like, say he has 10 elixir and he goes in with a giant graveyard at their bridge, I could just go with my barrel right at that time and then defend easily with like a bomb tower for his giant uh, dark goblin plus e-spirit for his graveyard and have like a very nice defense and also get some pretty good damage on his tower, whereas it's pretty hard to normally get good damage since he has so many different responses. I'm going to go for prediction log here on his skarmy. We do actually hit it. Okay, that's a really nice log there. That's going to be like a thousand damage. Also, this guy did just miss his arrows earlier in the game on our Dark Goblin. Typical giant graveyard player. It's a pretty hard matchup here since we have no Inferno Tower or Mighty Miner, so it does make it a lot harder to DPS down their giants. That was a pretty dark, pretty good Dark Goblin there, going to force out his minions, which are pretty hard to deal with on offense sometimes. But I feel like the E-Spirit does kind of carry this matchup since it's so good against the graveyard itself. I'm going to go for another barrel here. It's kind of important that we go with barrels in this matchup a lot since we have to bait out those small spells from him so we can't really use them on offense and get a ton of damage with his graveyard pushes. Should be a good defense here against his archer queen. I'm going to go with my log as well so the knight can stay alive and DPS it down. Now I'm going to go for a dark goblin here at the bridge force out something. He'll play a skarmy onto it. I'll take that. Now he has no skarmy for our goblin barrel. I think he has to go with arrows. Yeah, he does have to arrows that. You can see we're using our goblin barrels really well in this match. Now he has no arrows for a dark goblin, so we can't really go in for a graveyard here unless he just decides to 
be over aggressive for no reason. He will still go with his graveyard. I mean, giant graveyard players don't really have too much logic in general, so <laughs> this guy's playing a little bit funny. Our Dark Goblin's gonna absolutely pop off here. Really good Dark Goblin. The Bomb Tower Death Bomb uh, does almost kill his minions and really easy defense. I'm gonna prediction log a Skarmy. We do hit his Skarmy. Man, these Dark Goblins are going crazy. And he has to arrows once again on defense. You can see how good all of our Goblin Barrels have been this match. And he has to spend a Dark Prince as well on our Knight. That's really bad for him. Okay, so I'll just go with another Knight here in the middle, kill his Dark Prince, and also should be able to take down his Giant. He will go with the Graveyard again, even though he has no arrows in cycle for our Dark Goblin. I don't know what this guy's doing, honestly. I'm gonna go for a Goblin Barrel right now, uh, try to get some sneaky damage. He will Snowball. Uh, okay, we got no shots, but still fine. His graveyards are kind of chipping away though. I'm gonna go for a Dark Goblin in the middle, just try to predict something. Man, these Dark Goblins are just like killing these Skarmies in milliseconds. I'm gonna go for a log here as well in case he plays something. He actually missed the arrows on one Goblin. <laughs> I don't know what other player would do that besides a giant graveyard player. I'm gonna go for another Dark Goblin here, try to keep up the pressure and make sure he can't really go in with any big pushes. I'm gonna go for a prediction log here, try to hit something. Oh, we hit the Skarmie once again. That's like the third prediction log of the match. E-Spirit will connect on basically everything. Okay, I think the giant might push back our Dark Goblin so it stays alive. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this is one heck of a match so far. Really good for showing what tip I was talking about though, because that, that tip is really applying to this match a lot. Okay, we'll go with arrows here. Oh, I didn't mean to go with my Dark Goblin there. I meant to go with like a knight or something. Oh, E-Spirit! Man, these Dark Goblins are going crazy. I just had drop glitch even, because I'm playing my cards so fast this match. This guy can't help but just laugh. I'm gonna go for my rocket here on his tower. We need like two two rockets and a little bit more. Now just like one rocket and maybe a few goblin stabs. I'll go for my barrel here so he has to go with his arrows on it. Can't support his graveyard push. And that will be good game. The fourth tip is to always focus on map control whenever you're playing a log bait deck. There's a lot of people who only think they can get damage with rockets whenever they face any deck with like a log or any small spell like that. But I feel like it's a lot more important to just have control of the field when you're playing a log bait. Like, it's very easy to get your opponent in a bad cycle as you see Riley constantly do and get those really nice outplays and predictions and stuff like that. So it's just way more important to make sure you have good field control with your princesses, always keeping your opponents in a bad cycle and stuff like that instead of always just trying to get your damage with rocket cycle and stuff like that, which is not really as effective in a lot of matchups. So in the next match here, Anaben will be playing a Lava Hound deck. I'm not really sure what variant he has, could be like a clone or something. Pretty weird version by him though, having Valkyrie and stuff. I will have to take some damage from this Flying Machine. It's really hard to deal with Flying Machines when you're playing a Log Bay deck. In this variation, we do have Inferno Tower luckily, so it should make it a little bit easier against Lava. Wait, he has Log. That's kind of weird to see in a Lava deck. And E-Spirit. I think he may have sniped us actually. If you guys didn't know, Anaben's a really... Really good top ladder player who almost always snipes his opponents using specific decks that he made just to hard counter them and have a really easy matchup. This could be very hard here. I don't know what his final cards are going to be though. Gonna have to kind of just wait and see here. He could have like a clone still or something crazy like that, but at least Inferno Tower should kind of save us from, from uh, struggling too much against these lava pushes. It's also pretty hard to break through the Valkyrie because it does fully counter the Knight plus Goblin gang. I'll just go for my princess in the back here, try to hopefully build up some field control little by little, but it's kind of hard since he has the flying machine as well to easily snipe it. I'll just go for my barrel here on his tower. He has log back in cycle though. He has such a quick cycle with his deck. He made like a really weird snipe deck to me it looks like. It definitely has to be a log based snipe though, because no other no other lava deck would run. Yeah, arrows and log. Like I've never seen a lava deck run that. Flying machine does unfortunately get one shot on our tower. I'll just go with my barrel here. He has the Fisherman, so those Goblins will get just one stab. That's not too bad. Goblin Gang does also apply quite a lot of pressure here. Gonna force out his Baby Dragon. I'll take that. I don't even know if he has like a Miner in his deck or even a clone or anything like that. It's a really random Lava deck that he made against us. I'm gonna go for a Juke Barrel here. It's always important to always switch up your Barrel placements as well. We do get two stabs in his tower. I'll take that. And I'm gonna go for a High Inferno Tower here. I think he has no reset against it, so it's kind of just like an easy... Easy Lava takedown and should also be able to kill his support troops. It will lock onto his flying machine. Really good Inferno Tower. I'm gonna go for my barrel here. He probably has log back in cycle. Or maybe, maybe not. I don't even know, honestly. It's pretty even right now. I'm gonna go for a Knight plus Goblin gang. 
let's see what he has for it. He will have the Fisherman and Valkyrie back in cycle. I kind of keep on forgetting how quick of a cycle he has, so I keep on not making the best plays, I guess, but we're still looking okay. I'm gonna go for an inside barrel. He does log it. Okay. Okay, so we should be fine here. Knight will deal with his Fisherman pretty well. I'm gonna go for another Goblin gang. He has the E-Spirit and Fisherman. We're kind of making him overcommit each time. You can see we have like a pretty good uh, pretty good field control right now. We're always making him play into us. Like he's never really building up the good lava push that he wants to make for himself. Okay, so it's kind of impossible to get damage here. But I'll just try my best. Gonna go for the knight here. Don't want to waste my Goblin Gang right away since I know he's probably gonna go with his Valkyrie on it. Yeah. Nice Inferno Tower though. Gonna kill his lava pretty easily. I'll go with my barrel as well just to keep on pressuring him. Make sure he can't. They can't fully commit to offense. Just like pretty good strategic goblin barrels here, making sure to always go with them for a good reason, as I said in the previous match. I'm gonna go for my gang here as well, force out the Valkyrie probably or something like that. He has the baby dragon, I'll take that as well. And I'll go for another goblin barrel. Wait, he's gonna lava in the back. I think I, can, I think I can actually go with my rocket here on this. It's a pretty aggressive rocket, but we kind of need to do it to get any damage from his tower. We can't really break through log plus arrows, which he has in his deck. Okay, I'm gonna go for a high inferno tower here. Maybe try to snipe the flying machine. Oh, it just barely doesn't work out though. It will lock onto his lava. Not too bad though. Wait, Goblin Barrel's, Goblin Barrel's getting good damage on the left side. Oh no. <laughs> Wait, how do I rocket all of this? I'm gonna have a Riley moment. Wait, is that gonna hit everything? Did you guys see how good that rocket was? Riley could never. Riley could never. <laughs> that was a really good rocket, man. Wait, do we just meet him? I think he has no base spell in his deck, no minor either, so he can't really get any damage, I think. Okay, I'm gonna go for my rocket as well. Hopefully his baby dragon doesn't walk on, and that will be good game. Alright guys, listen very closely for the fifth and final tip. Could be very useful for a man like you, or Riley. Do not miss your rockets. Don't learn from Riley. Please do not learn from Riley. You guys don't want to end up like him, missing rockets every other game. Just don't miss your rockets, guys. Just go for safe rockets that you know you can actually hit. You can see I always hit my rockets. You could see it in the first game. I never missed a single rocket in my life, so... Please, guys, be like me. Don't be like Riley. I just want the best for you guys, honestly. And that's gonna kind of wrap it up for these top 5 tips. But I do have one bonus tip for you guys. Don't be afraid to make unorthodox plays with Logbait. The Logbait deck does have a bit of a slower cycle compared to some of the other cycle decks, so sometimes you just have to make pretty... Pretty just strange plays I guess you could say like if your opponent goes with like a battle ram first plane you have an inferno tower and a goblin barrel in cycle it's actually not too bad of an idea to go with the defensive barrel because it does fully counter the battle ram and it does also give you a plus one elixir trade whereas the inferno tower which most people would probably go for it is going to be a negative one elixir trade so sometimes just interesting plays like those can actually work out quite well in your favor when you're running a log bait deck we're just going to try to clap this guy here in the last match. I think he's running a Mega Knight deck. He has like the... Yeah, he does have the Mega Knight right here. Okay. I don't know how we're going to kill these bats though. This could be a little bit bad. Maybe these Goblins can kind of pick them off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'm going to have to go for the defensive barrel that I was just talking about. I think most people probably would have went with like a Princess there. But I feel like the barrel is actually a bit of a better play there. Going to also... Maybe get a few Goblin Stabs on his tower. We do force out the Prince. I'll take that as well. Should be a pretty good defense here with just like an Ice Spirit and like a Knight or something. He'll play his Bandit as well, so I'm going to go with my gang here. Should be a nice defense, though. I think we should be fine here. Also going to get a few Spear Goblins on the counter push. He probably has to respond to this. He'll go with his Wall Wallers in the middle. Pretty nice chip damage, though. We're getting back into it after that kind of unfortunate early Mega Knight. I'm going to go for the Barrel here. Okay, what is... What was that minor? <laughs> what was that? Okay. It's pretty pretty even right now, honestly. He has no log in his deck or anything, though, so it's kind of uh, a bit hard for him to stop our barrels very well. He'll go with his Mega Knight in the back. I think we should be good here, though. Our princess should stay alive. At least our second princess is what I meant to say. Should stay alive. And it will make it so he can't go with his bats on our Inferno Tower. He'll have to go with his bats all the way far back, so that's... Solid for us. Goblin Barrel is getting pretty good damage, but I'm, I don't know how we're going to defend this. Um, are we dead? We could be dead. Yeah, we could be dead. Um, or are we? Inferno Tower? 
That was a really good Inferno Tower, gonna kill his bats as well. We somehow survived that. We, we really shouldn't have survived that. We should not have survived that. <laughs> okay, so... We're still in it for sure. I think this is actually our match to lose at this point, so we have to win this. So we'll have to zap our Goblin Gang. That's pretty bad for him. He has no zap now for our Goblin Barrel. This could get some good damage, maybe. He'll have to Mega Knight. One Goblin does get a stab, though, so that should be just about good game. Gonna go for my Wog as well. Really nice and easy win. Thank you guys for watching, and see you in the next one. Bye!